Simon peered through a telescope from a lookout post in Yellowstone National Park. Hours ticked by, rain soaked his clothes. Still, he didn't budge. Finally, a mother grizzly bear emerged from the pine forest with two playful cubs by her side. She was huge, especially when she stood on her hind legs. Coyotes quickly retreated. No one messed with a grizzly. Seven-year-old Simon wished he'd be as powerful as a bear. Back home, he felt anything but powerful. Words formed clearly in his head, but when he opened his mouth, the sounds collided. It's just nervousness that makes him stutter. The doctor said reassuringly, he'll be fine. On the playground, Simon didn't feel fine. Kids teased him, chose him last or not at all. But in the woodlands behind his house, he felt happier. There he talked easily to the squirrels. He photographed the wildlife. He read and reread books, especially his favorite one about a grizzly named Wap. You know, it's interesting, that same camping trip I was on when I was seven and saw my first bear, it was a mother with two cubs. One of those cubs grew up to become Yellowstone's most iconic bear, a bear known as Scarface. When I was 13, my family was back in Yellowstone, watching bears, watching Scarface, now an 800-pound male grizzly. Someone saw my love of this bear and told me, did I know about this unique bear that lived in my home province of British Columbia, noticing my parents' BC license plate? I didn't know about the bear. I wanted to know more. I wanted to find out its story. So when I came home, I started learning about the rare white Kermode, or what's become better known as the spirit bear. I couldn't believe that this bear existed only in my home province and that it numbered fewer than 400. What's more, when I discovered that its habitat was slated for development, I knew I wanted to do something. I felt this bear deserved to have a place on our planet for all time, and we needed to err on the side of caution to ensure that it would always not only just survive, but thrive. I, I did have a stutter growing up, and I probably still do, especially when I'm tired or stressed, as most people who know me well can, can account for. But I remember I had a grade five teacher, actually, before the Spirit Bear campaign. I wanted to help save bald eagles from lead shot poisoning. And I remember wanting to give a speech about the bald eagles, and she came to me and said, you know, Simon, honestly, this is not what you love doing. It makes you nervous. You have a stutter. Um, are you going to be okay? You might get bullied. And it was a real wake-up call, but it wasn't a discouragement. It was almost an empowering moment. It was, you can do this if you really want to do it, but recognize it's going to be hard. That was that first moment where I realized that I needed to embrace my fears and overcome them if I wanted to do the things that I really believed in. I tell people all the time, I'm not special. I'm not particularly gifted, I'm not overly smart. Anyone who reads this book needs to remember they could do the same thing. And I hope this acts as that definitive reminder that all of us have a passion, every one of us makes a difference every single day in the words we choose to speak and the actions we choose to take. And when we do nothing, nothing changes. But when we choose to make our voices heard, anything is possible.